All right, welcome back. So let's talk about how to manage pitch counts and the arms of young pitchers. So this is obviously really important, but a lot of youth coaches, I don't think, just put enough thought into it, to be perfectly honest with you. So number one, pitch counts for starters. You know, 10, 12 U, 75 pitches is probably all they need to go. At 10 U, 11 U, I'd probably go less than that just to mix kids around and get them all to pitch. 13 and 14, I think they're fine with 90 pitches, 15 to 18 you know, around 100 pitches. So thing to, to note about 100, it's arbitrary, and it really is like anything else. If you're well-conditioned and your workload is consistent, so you build up to it, I think 100 is arbitrary. Now, that's not to say that we're going to go over it. I think it's fine just to cap it there. I don't think we need to, uh, as an organization, for me personally, need to push to 115 or 120 just because we feel like we can get them up comfortable with that I just don't feel like it's necessary to pitch that much so err on the side of caution I think 100 is fine even if it is this weird magical round arbitrary number so this is the ASMI uh, and MLB pitch smart guidelines chart so again you'll see this mirrored uh, with exactly what we just kind of talked about so daily max is you know up till up to 14 years old about 95 pitches 10 years old 75 pitches something like that um, you know, 15 to 22, 95 to 120. And they don't have that 100 pitch uh, mark on there. You know, if you're older than that and you're a college pitcher and you can go 120 and you're conditioned to do that, I think that's okay. Uh, and I think they, they do as well. But see the required rest on here, zero days, one to 20. And uh, one day, that means you pitch on Monday. One day rest means you're off on Tuesday. And then you can pitch again on Wednesday. So one day in between. And... I'm a little more conservative, I think, than this, just because I know how much kids throw. And obviously, these are some of the best minds in the world that put these charts together. Uh, but I just think there's a lot of factors to consider. And just because two days rest is required when you throw 50 pitches doesn't mean you should go, you know, two innings Monday and then pitch two innings in on Thursday, two innings again on Saturday or Sunday, two innings again. Like, you wouldn't just continue to go round and round like that. There's still – you have to massage – uh, the right things to do out of this and just use this as a general template. So here's some good examples about how to use your relievers, I think, correctly. So there's really just a couple combinations, and I've listed them here. You throw an inning, you get no day's rest, you throw one more inning, then you're done. You're going to be shut down for a couple days. You throw one inning, you get a day off, then you can throw another inning or two innings, maybe three if it's like we're in a pinch. All right, not the end of the world. Uh, two innings pitched, you get one day rest, Probably just go one inning. Two innings, a day off, and then one inning is a decent amount. Uh, two innings pitched. If you get two days rest, you could probably go two or three again after those two days. And then three innings pitched, which is starting to get pretty lengthy. Uh, two days rest, probably just do one inning if you come back on two days rest. Probably don't come back on one day rest after throwing three innings. Three innings is a lot. And then three innings, if you get three full days rest, probably one just to two innings pitched. And this last one is important to note. So on the next slide, I'm going to talk about considering the entire week's workload. But look here on the, the bottom one. Three innings pitched with three days rest. That's like the normal amount of rest. Like, that's good. Okay, they completely rested. But you're not going to then just, like, start over and go five innings because then if you look at your week as a whole, you have quickly have a kid throwing eight innings in a four-day span. That's not really what we want to be doing. So once you start to have these longer relief outings, you have to start to consider the whole week's workload. So I don't think a pitcher in amateur baseball should be throwing really more than 120 pitches in a week. You know, if you're a starter and you're going to use up your 100 in one shot, you're probably best just only pitching once a week. We don't need to put you on a five-day rotation like in the minor leagues or major leagues. College guys pitch once a week. So we shouldn't be having amateur pitchers throwing three innings on Monday, then three, min three more on Friday, even though they have their three days, in, you know, three days rest in between. Then they get two days off, and they're throwing three more on Monday again or two more on Monday. Now they've thrown eight innings in the course of seven or eight days. That's a lot of innings. So, again, if you just go off the template, off the, the chart, you could be like, oh, he's fine to pitch this day. And then the whole season you keep, like, pushing the limits, two innings, two days off, two innings, two days off, two innings, two days off. And then you've done that for ten weeks, and they're exhausted, and they've thrown a lot of innings. So I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think we also need to consider the overall week as a whole, looking at the total pitch count. So again, 
relievers are probably the ones who are most likely to get stuck in this. Now, I, I, well, I guess I shouldn't say that because I've seen a lot of amateur pitchers start a game on Friday, come back to pitch on Sunday because their coaches ask, oh, how do you feel? They always say that they feel good. Unless they're legitimately injured, they almost always say they feel good. And they're not usually lying when they're young because their arms bounce back really well. You can't ask the question, how do you feel? You just have to go by the numbers. Now, is two innings where you give up five hits and walk four guys and the bases are loaded once or twice, are those two innings the same as two innings where it's like three up, three down, and then the next inning it's like a base hit, you know, ground ball out, fly out, pop up? No, like high stress two innings, low stress two innings. You can definitely consider that stuff too. Those things are important. You know, three low stress innings, 44 pitches is not the same as three innings, 65 pitches where they're getting in, in and out of jams constantly. So you can also consider that stuff too. There, there is legitimacy to the, the stress level of an inning. But again, just be conservative. Pitching and catching. This one um, is, I think, relatively straightforward, and they're just going to have to understand their role. If they're a primary catcher, like they're your, they're your A catcher, your starting catcher, he's going to catch three to five games a weekend. He should not be a starting pitcher for you. Just sorry. If you want to be a starter, catch less. Um, he should, he, you know, he's okay to probably be a reliever, but you should not pitch him on the same day he catches and really should be a, probably a pretty short relief outing. It's just so many throws. It's just so many throws, and they're just constantly worn down from it. It's just not a great thing to do on their arm. The only other guys you see get Tommy John besides pitchers, not the only, but the majority of, like, the position players are catchers. So never, ever pitch on the same day he catches. It's not a good thing. So the backup catcher... I'll let a backup catcher be a starting pitcher, but they just have to agree that you're probably only going to catch one game on a weekend. So if we play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then I'll try to schedule his catching day early or really late so we can get a couple days in between. So if I have a kid who's a starting pitcher, I'll catch him on Thursday. He'll play the outfield or whatever on Friday, and then he'll start a game on Saturday. I just try to get a couple days buffer in there because it's just a lot of throwing. Uh, but again, never on the same day they catch. And again, try to get a, give a rest day in between the day they'd pitch and the day they'd catch. Um, Mid-inning pitching changes. Do not bring a pitcher in from the field. Just don't do it. Plan ahead. I realize that once in a while, it just happens. Like, you just don't have anyone on the bench. The pitcher has an absolute meltdown, and you just have to get him out there, and there's, like, no way around it. I'm, I'm aware that that happens once in a while. Avoid it at all possible costs. And... Uh, even in those situations, I mean, unless you have no one on the bench, you can sub a guy in, use the reentry rules if it's your starter, one of your starters. You know, starters can be reentered for. Uh, sub them in the middle of the inning, get him to go down to the bullpen and, and get loose, and then you can go into pitch from there. So that's the easy way out of it. But even then, try not to use that so much. Try just to plan ahead and uh, get your relief pitchers on the bench. You know, it's okay to sit guys. So sit them, let them know that, hey, I have you in relief today, so I'm going to have you sit so that you're ready. That's part of being a team player. That's the best way to do it. If you can't avoid it um, and they, you, you're like planning ahead, so say your pitcher is at 40, he's going to go, he's in the fourth inning, he just finishes the fourth inning, he's gone 85 pitches. You're like, uh, I'm going to send him back out, okay, if you decision. Let's say 80, 80 pitches. Okay, you send him back out. All right, he's got a 100-pitch cap. He's at 80 pitches through four, which is terrible. Uh, you send him back out for the fifth. <laughs> That's not good pitch, pitch efficiency. But before the fifth inning starts, you call your shortstop over or whoever, and you're like, hey, it might, we might have to go to you. Can you go into the bullpen and just get an extra 15 to 20 throws in, throw a little off the mound if you want, and then go out, play short during the inning, because I might have to come to you during the middle of the game, uh, the middle of the inning. That happens sometimes. If you have to do it, that's like the last the last resort, but you can't uh, just bring a kid in from the field. It's not the way to go. Um, okay, just covered that. And the other thing that I want to uh, touch on, just in general, a roster of 12 or more players is important. So a lot of teams sometimes only have 10, 11. Uh, we'd like to have 13, 14, 15 if possible, but... If you're a 10U or 11U or 12U coach, sometimes the rosters get pretty light. Try to have 12 or more just because everyone needs to learn to pitch. Everyone needs to learn to sit the bench too. 
And if a kid can't sit one or two games without complaining about it, then he doesn't, he shouldn't play baseball. But having 12 or more players is going to give you the leeway to have kids on the bench where we can then take care of that. Uh, another group of people we should discuss are infielders. So infielders, it is just not ideal for like, and we know you're, the, the shortstop's the best player on the team. Usually it's just not ideal for the shortstop to catch or to, to play short for four or five games in a row. And then you bring him and you start him and throw him six innings. They just don't throw that well when they do it. And uh, their arm, I mean, you'll throw on average 100 throws per game, no matter where you play. We've had the modus sleeve on our players. It's consistently 100 throws a game. That includes all the warm-ups, pre-game, uh, in between innings, and in, obviously in games. It just adds up quickly. It's, it's, it's a little bit astonishing. So, you know, if, if you're going to pitch him on a Saturday or Sunday, he's already played three or four games at short. He's already thrown 400 throws that week. How, how is his arm going to feel? You know, imagine a major league pitcher doing that. It's So just remember, if your shortstop is the best player on the field, which usually they are, you still probably just need to be extra conservative. I'm like, look, I'm going to pitch you sparingly, or you're going to be in relief, or if you need to start him, just start to sit him a little bit more and try to get him some rest. Just EH him or DH him, right? Just try to get him on the bench a little bit more so his arm can rest before he's ready to go out there and pitch. But I think that's problematic to have one of your best infielders. It doesn't have to be your shortstop, but you know, one of your best infielders out there 100% of the time and then come in and start a game. Uh, just a couple other notes. So for like before the season, make sure your pitching staff gets consistent bullpens. So whether that when in season, you know, and I'm talking about the tournament formula, which is, you know, we play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, typically they need to get a pen on Tuesday or Wednesday, typically Tuesday. Um, oftentimes Wednesday, if they're, you know, you're projecting them out to uh, Saturday or Sunday starter, but they need to get another bullpen in. So one, bull, one bullpen and then their two relief outings or their one start. But that's consistent workload. Make sure they get that during the season, the whole season. Otherwise, they're not going to get better. Uh, off season, in the eight weeks prior to the season, they should be getting two pens, like a Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, Wednesday, Saturday, whatever it is, a couple days in between the eight weeks building up. And then, uh, you know, most bullpens are 30 to 40 pitches, and you can build them up with their starters up to 60, 70, 80 in the bullpen. But when the season starts, 60, maybe 75 pitches, but I think 60 is the way to go. Add 15 until you're consistently at 90 pitches. So week one, 60 pitches. Week two, 75. Week three, they're at 90. Okay, and then 90, 90, and then they're okay. But if they miss a week, say you're off a week and they don't pit and they don't play uh, and they miss their start, drop them back down a little bit because you don't want to have this huge swing where they're going up and down, up and down, and their pitch count, their arm's not used to it. So back them off a little bit. Or make sure they get a long bullpen in to replace that start. It's better to keep them consistently throwing and have a consistent workload than to go up and down and get rest and then a long period without throwing. That's not good on their arm. So once they're in season and they're in shape, they don't need to have a whole week or 10 days off, which is often what happens when they have a, you have a rest week as a team. They don't need that. They just need to, continue, they need to consistently throw. They get an extra couple days off in there if you have an off week, but they can't miss – they can't go from 90 pitches to zero, then back up to 90 the next weekend. It's not good for their arm. So, again, drop their workload a bit when they do that or make it mandatory that they get a long bullpen in to replace that missed start. And then just in general, consistency. So this is for in-season, five days of throwing per week. I think two off days is appropriate. So typically those for us are like Monday or Wednesday, depending of which our bullpen day is. Um, you know, if we don't play on Sunday, it'd be Sunday and Monday. But two off days, I think, is appropriate. One start or two relief appearances is pretty much the workload they're going to do. And then one bullpen. So, again, probably Tuesday or Wednesday. One to two catch days with a flat ground at the end. Flat ground is just a downhill session from flat. So your partner gets down and you throw to each side of the plate, spin your breaking ball, your chain up, all that stuff. And then a long toss day or whatever that means to you. So... For us, it's like 180-foot max. You shouldn't be arcing it up. It's not terribly good for your elbow. Uh, research shows that it increases stresses. So that's a general layout of what an in-season should look like. And I have much more uh, in-depth stuff, um, in-depth guidelines for this. But in general, that's a very simple way to think about it. All right? So overall, just plan ahead, plan ahead, plan ahead, plan ahead. 
if you plan ahead and you look at the scope of the week and you look at the scope of your arms, who can start, who can relieve, you can just make the pieces fit. It's not terribly complex, but just make logical decisions, be conservative, and you cannot rely on just four or five pitchers. That's just not appropriate, but so many amateur teams do it. The same kids are starting. They're starting on Thursday. They're starting again on Sunday. It's not okay. So just make logical decisions. Go by pitch counts. They're still the easiest tool to monitor. And like the Moda sleeve, I think, is a good product. Um, it's just not as easy to use as pitch counts. And could be better. But for right now, what's accessible to everybody are pitch counts and planning and teaching everyone to pitch and being conservative. Those things are accessible to everybody. And every coach should be exercising caution with young arms. Winning games at 12U, 13U, 14U, they don't matter at all. It does not matter at all. Kids need to get better. They need to learn to pitch. They often need to learn to get out of jams. Sometimes you have to leave them out there in a long inning. And then sometimes you have to get them out of there. So it just, it, it takes a lot of massaging to get it right. Balancing a pitching staff can be challenging, but the more you look at the week, the more you plan ahead, set your relievers aside, set your starters up, let them know when they're going to pitch so you can track their workload and you can monitor what they're going to do in a given week. But planning is really, really crucial to keeping pitchers safe.